welcome. So, taking a position that you can be comfortable in for just a few minutes here. So you could start lying down, you could start sitting on the floor or in a chair. Okay, so however you're going to be at ease just for a few minutes. Okay. And then as you get there, when you're comfortable, you can let your eyes rest closed. And just let yourself settle in. So there's the feeling of slowing down, of coming to the moment that we are in. Okay, you can feel the ground that's underneath you. So there are certain places on your body that you're touching the floor or you're touching the support that you're sitting on. So rest into those places. So we have the feeling that we're connecting to the ground, to the earth. Okay, you can feel that you're breathing, so you don't have to change your breath. Just be aware, feel the in-breath and feel the out breath, the exhale. And then notice your body. Just notice how you're feeling today, where your body is at. We just want to meet ourselves where we're at each time that we practice. As we move into the posture portion of the practice today, just do your best to keep coming back to the sense of awareness. So an awareness of how you're feeling and where your body is at. Okay? And your mind is going to go off other places and just guide it back when you notice that it has gone somewhere else. So we're listening to the body today, working where the body is at. Okay, at your own pace, take a gentle, deeper breath in. And let that breath go. Okay, and do that one more time. A deeper inhale. And then letting your breath out. All right, relax your breath. If you are lying down, uh, shift yourself up into a seated place. And you can sit on something on the floor, or you can sit right down on the ground, if that's your preference. Your legs can be comfortable, so they might be further out or they might be tucked in into a cross-legged position, whatever works best for you. Okay, so sitting yourself up tall and when we're gently going to turn towards the right. So just let your spine turn towards the right. So your right hand has come beside you, behind you a little bit on the floor. The left hand has come either into your lap or over onto your right leg. So you can feel the winding in your spine. Easy shoulders, and if you like, you could turn your head to the right. Okay, just moving where the body is at today. And then gently unwind, so come back to the mid middle point, and then when you're ready, you're going to turn to the left. So the left hand can come beside you or behind you a little bit on the floor. Right hand can land in your lap or on your left leg. Your legs are relaxing down. Okay. Maybe you've chosen to turn the head to the left as well. You might feel like you're 
bringing the tension out of your back gently. Okay, unwind the turn. So the head unwinds and the heart unwinds. So your back to be neutral facing the front. Bring your right hand down to the floor on the right side and the left arm up and over top. So tipping to the right, just feeling the lengthening in the left side, easy shoulders. Okay, take your time, come to the opposite side. So the left hand will come down on the left side, right arm can come up and over. You can sort of fall into the support of that left hand. And you can feel the space in the right side of your body. And maybe you can feel your breath in the right side of your body. Okay, come on back up. Bring the bottoms of the feet together. Okay, so you could choose to have the heels a further distance away from you, or they could be tucked in a little bit closer. Okay, the bases of the big toes don't have to stay together, so they can fall apart. Bring your hands down behind you on the floor, and then just press into the hands and lift the chest. Okay, let the legs do their best to relax. So you open up the front of the body. So you might feel that you've uh, gotten tall. You might also feel like you come into a little bit of a back bend. So whichever one feels the most nourishing for your body. Okay, do your best to let the legs go. Feel the breath coming into the chest or into the front of the body. And then from here, we're going to walk forward. So tipping yourself forward. So your hands could stay behind you on the floor and you can press to lengthen the spine or you can walk the hands forward if you like. Okay, so just gently feeling into the back of your body. So gently forward. Okay, come on back up. From here, we're gonna come into table pose. So that's all fours. So you can rock yourself up onto hands and knees. So your hands are under your shoulders and your knees are underneath your hips. Uh, your fingers are gently spread, so there's lots of support there. And then we're gonna come into what's known as cat and cow. So you're gonna roll the pelvis so that your tail tucks and then gently round your back up towards the ceiling like a Halloween cat. And then you're gonna move the opposite way. So let the pelvis roll so the tail lifts and then let the belly drop and you can gently lift the chin if you like. So there's a little bit more length right now on the front of your body than there is on the back of your body. Okay, so go back and forth between cat, rounding up, and cow pose where the pelvis is rolled forward and the front of the body is lengthening. So you're in a little bit of a back bend, okay? And cat is a little bit of a forward fold. Now, if either one of those doesn't feel good in your back, uh, you can move from table pose from your neutral spine into the one that your back likes. So into your cat or into your cow. Okay, so you're choosing the range you're listening to the body. Okay, and just see if you can notice all parts of your back and your pelvis get to move there. So the pelvis gets to move as well as the lower back and the middle back and the upper back and the neck just into the range that feels good for you. Okay, you're gonna make your way back to neutral. So where the pelvis is neutral and the spine is neutral, so back into table pose. Then from table, we're gonna drop the seat back towards the heels. So you drop back, and then you lift back up into table pose. Okay, so the seat moves back towards the heels, just as far as you comfortably go, and then come on back up. Okay, so as you go back and forth, can you feel that you're moving your knees, your knee joints, you're moving at your hips, your leg bones where they come into your pelvis, and at your shoulders. And so it's a, a sort of lovely gentle movement that lets us um, move all of those joints just in a really gentle way. 
and your back is also changing shape, your spine. Okay, when you're ready, you're going to come down into child's pose. So you're going to let the sitting bones stay back there towards the heels, and you're going to fold forward. Now, you could take the knees a little wider if you like that better. You don't have to. Uh, and you can bring the head down to a support. So the head might come down to folded hands, or the head might come all the way down to the floor. Okay, and then just take a moment there. You can feel where you're touching the ground. You can feel your breath. Right, so the belly can be soft, so the breath can be in the belly. Maybe you can notice your breath moving in your back. Soften the shoulders, soften the jaw. Okay. Then when you're ready, we're going to come on back up into table pose. Okay, so back in table, knees back underneath the hips. You are welcome to be on your hands. You could also be down on your forearms at this point if you wanted to. Okay, we're going to take the right leg back, so you can curl the toes of the right foot under and lift the knee up, and then let your weight shift backwards towards your feet, okay, towards that other end of your mat. So you're pressing back through that right heel. You might prefer the right leg have a bend in the knee, or you might prefer that the leg is straight. Come forward a little bit so that you can bring your hands to the floor one at a time. So you're back up on hands and then let the right leg come up. So you're just bringing that right leg to where it's more or less parallel to the floor. You could pull your tummy in here. Okay, now we're going to step the right foot forward into a lunge. Okay, so it's going to come up towards the top of the mat so you can help it if you want to. Come on up to the top of the mat. So if you have blocks here, or some kind of support, and you want to use them, you can. So those blocks can come underneath your hands. Okay? And if you don't have blocks, it's okay. You can just put your hands down on the floor. And you have your left knee on the ground behind you. So if you have a space for a little more stretch, you could move the left knee backwards. The front knee, the right knee, is stacked on top of the ankle so that the shin is straight up and down and that right foot is flat on the floor. Okay, from your lunge, let your seat move backwards, walk your hands back so your right leg becomes straighter. You could keep the right foot flat or you could let the bottom of the foot come up off the floor but the heel would stay down on the ground. Okay, and if you brought your blocks with you, uh, then you can be higher up, so you can be in less of a forward fold, because you can lift up, which you can also do without blocks, if you want to just bring the hands onto the right thigh or be up on your fingertips. Okay, so we're going to go back and forth between the lunge and this kneeling half pyramid. Okay, so bring the right foot flat, let the pelvis come forward, and then let the pelvis move backwards and let the front leg straighten out. Okay, so take your time moving gently forwards and backwards. So moving the joints helps to lubricate them. Okay, last time coming backwards into your kneeling half pyramid. Okay, and then come back to the lunge. Okay, so in the lunge, we're going to add a turn. So you could have the left hand on the floor or on your block. Okay, right hand to the right leg. And then gently turn towards the right leg. Okay, if you wanted to, you could take the right arm and you could lift it up towards the ceiling. Or it can just stay on the right thigh. 
Okay, you might be looking down towards the right foot, or you might have turned the head with the heart. Okay, unwind your turn and come back to table pose. And then from table, come on down to child's pose. So your seat's gonna go back, you've chosen how far apart the knees are, and then bring your head down to something supportive. Okay, and just take a moment there, breathe, feel, Okay, one side might feel a little different than the other. Okay, and then when you're ready, make your way back up. So onto hands and knees or onto forearms and knees. So the knees are back under the hips. Take the left leg back, so lift the knee. Plant the toes on the floor and push back through the heel. So you could have the knee bent if that feels better, or you could have the leg straight if that feels better. You could be moving back and forth between the two. Okay, the hands are going to come to the floor, under the shoulders, and then the left leg is going to lift up off of the ground. Okay, soften the jaw, gently pull the belly inward. If you're hugging those abdominal organs towards your spine, okay, and then bring the left foot forward into your lunge. So bend the knee and let the foot come on up towards the top of the mat. So blocks under your hands if you like. And what, it, what the blocks do is it moves the ground a little closer to us, so it means we don't have to reach as far. Okay, remember, you can have the right knee further back, or you might have it more underneath your hip. Okay, left foot is flat, the knee is stacked on top of the ankle. Okay, take the hips backwards, walk your hands back so they stay under your shoulders. So the left leg has become straighter. Maybe you've kept the foot on the floor, or maybe you've lifted the sole of the foot up off the ground and the heel is still on the floor. If you've got your blocks, then you can have brought them with you. Okay, so the point here at the moment is this long left leg. Okay, you're going to come back to your lunge. So left foot flat, knee stacks on top of the ankle, pelvis comes forward. And then when you're ready, walk backwards. Okay, so just gently forwards and backwards. Moving the joints. Loosening up at the hips. Okay, go backwards one more time. So you're in your half pyramid. That left leg straighter. And then come back to your lunge. So left foot flat, knee stacks on top of the ankle, right hand to the floor or a block, left hand to the left thigh, and then turn the rib cage towards the left. Okay, so the left shoulder is stacking on top of the right. If you wanted to take that left hand up to the ceiling, you could. Okay, and you're choosing the direction to turn your head, whether you're looking down or to the side or maybe up. Okay, so we're moving in a way that allows us to meet our body where it's at today and feels nourishing. Okay, unwind your turn and come on back to table pose. And then from table, you can come back to child's pose. Okay, just, just check in with yourself. Okay, when you're ready, we're going to come up to kneeling. Okay, so you can lift yourself up so that you're standing on your knees. Okay. If you would rather uh, be kneeling lower down, you can. And if you would rather be standing up, you can. All right. So rolling out your shoulders. So the arms.
arms hang, let the shoulder blades be moving on your upper back. So there is an upward movement of the shoulders, a backward movement, a downward movement. And just let them move. Don't worry about the range or the pace. Sometimes slower is better. Okay, drop the arms, relax the shoulders. Take your uh, left arm and hug it across your body. So your right hand has come up above the elbow and you're just drawing that left arm across, letting the shoulders be easy. Switch arms, so let the left arm go, let the right arm come across, the left hand can come up. Okay, you could always put the right hand on the left shoulder if that is better, dropping the shoulders. You could feel here that the right shoulder blade has moved a little bit away from your spine. hang beside you and then you're just going to lift them just so that they're free of your sides okay so they don't have to be up here they can just be free of your sides roll your arm bones in your shoulder sockets so you can actually take a look here right we're trying to be moving this upper arm bone at the shoulder so this is the, the upper arm is what you want to pay attention to on each side and make sure that you're rolling your arm bones in your shoulder sockets. So don't worry about the hands or the forearms. Try to keep your awareness up at the upper part, the upper connection of the arm to your torso. And just let it loosen up. Okay, roll the arms so your palms face forward. Move the arms backward gently. Great, so there's just a little bit more length here in through the chest, maybe down the front of the arms. Okay, roll your arm bones so your palms face backwards. And then let the fingers interlace behind your back if it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, your arms can just hang beside you. Okay, now if you got those arms back there, you're just letting them relax. You don't have to pull anything back. Just let the shoulders relax there and let the arms sort of feel heavy behind your back. So they're actually resting on the back of you. Okay, you can feel a breath or two. And when you're ready, let the arms go. You can give them a shake out, give the hands a shake, you can move the shoulders a little bit, and then we're gonna come on up to standing. So however you wanna get up onto your feet, you can. Okay, come on up onto those feet. So our sort of basic standing pose is mountain pose, Tadasana. So you can take a look down at your feet, not your legs. And we'd like our thigh bones to be neutral here, which means that we're not rotated outward in either, sometimes it's just one, but let those thigh bones be neutral. And then if you track all the way down, that makes your feet uh, more or less neutral as well. Okay, so you can just take a look and you can make sure that your feet and your legs are positioned where you think they are. And then you can bring your head back up. All right, so feel down into those feet. On the bottom of each foot, we have a triangle of support. So we have the base of the big toe, so the ball of the foot, the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, and the center of the heel. So that forms a triangle on the sole of each foot. And those are the three points that we can, when we're doing our standing postures, we can remember to connect through. Okay, toes are easy. You might 
feel a little bit more weighted through the center of the heel. Okay, but we're going to play with weight at this point. So you're just going to let your weight shift forward into your toes and then backward into your heels. Okay, so you're just rocking forwards and backwards. out in, in each spot, so when you hang out in your toes towards the balls of the feet, what does that start to feel like in your body? Okay, when you hang out back in your heels, what does that start to feel like in your body? What does your body do to keep you balanced? Okay, and then you find the sort of middle ground where you feel nice and steady. Okay, we can also do the same thing from side to side. So you can let your weight come over into one foot and then you can let it shift over into the other foot. Just get a little bit of a feel for it. And then see if you can find the middle ground. Okay, where it feels like you're even in both legs, in both feet, side to side and front to back. Okay, the knees aren't locked doesn't have to be a whole lot of engagement through the body to just to stand in our legs. Okay, so from this place, we're going to come into chair pose. So you can let your hands, they could come to your hips. And then uh, chair pose is like a standing squat. So you're going to let your seat move back and down. So you're going to bend your knees and you hinge at your hips and you hinge at your ankles. And your back hasn't changed, it's still straight. It's not rounded. It might have tipped a little, but it's still straight from your head to your tail. Okay, push through your heels and come on back up. So straighten out legs. Okay, sink back again. So hinge at your hips, your knees are gonna bend. Now your weight here is more in your heels, so you can try wiggling your toes a little. Okay, push down and come on up okay, and do one more. So sitting bones at the bottom of the pelvis go back and down. Weight in your feet is even. Okay, press down and come on back up. Okay, a little bit of balance is next. So if you want to shift where you are in your space so that you have a chair beside you or a wall beside you, you can. We're going to stand in our right foot, and you're just going to cross your left shin over your right. So left big toe on the floor. Okay, let your arms do whatever they need to do to help you stay steady. Okay, you can stay here. You could also shift the left foot to the inside of the right leg. So the left big toe is still on the floor, and the left heel is on the inside of the right leg. We're going to take this left foot and step it back so you can turn it and then step the left foot back. So you've landed in pyramid pose, your feet on separate railway tracks. So you're not on a balance beam, you're on separate railway tracks. And if you can, your toes are all pointing forward. So sometimes we find that the back leg is turned out a little bit. And with practice, maybe we can let that back leg be turned, or not turned rather, so that everything is pointing forward. Alright, so your feet are flat, your legs are straight but not locked. Let your hands come to your heart. Okay, we're going to turn towards the right here. So take a breath in, and as you exhale, turn the heart, the rib cage, towards the right. So there's a little twist towards the right. And then inhale and come back to where you started. Exhale and turn to the right. So feel if that's happening at your waist. Come back to your starting point. Okay, last time, turn to the right and stay and breathe. Okay. If you would like to change the position of your hands, maybe you want to bring your left hand over towards your right side or your right hip. 
Maybe you want to take your right arm and be bring it to the right hip, or it could come to the back of your pelvis, or it could come behind you, toward, over towards your left hip. Unwind your turn, unwind your arms, take your back foot and step it back up into mountain pose. So you're back at the top. Okay, take a look down. Make sure your feet are where you think you are, where you think they are. Okay, you can close your eyes for a moment. Just notice what you notice. Okay, we're gonna come back to those three squats, three chair poses. Okay, so you're gonna hinge at your hips. Take your seat back and down. So hips hinged, knees bent, ankles shifted. So your shins came towards the tops of your feet. Weight is in your heels. Push down to come up. So push down to straighten out the legs. That brings you back up. Sink back down. Okay, press into the floor to help you come up. Okay, and one more time. So down and back. And then shifting back up. So push down to come on back up. Okay, lovely. Stand in your left foot, and you take your right shin and cross your left shin and bring your right big toe to the floor. Okay, so practice standing in your left leg, not on it, so don't brace it. It's not a pull or a stick, right? We're in the leg, and it's a supple uh, part of our body that is right now transmitting force through it, right? Down and up, so let it be, we're gonna let it be supple, not rigid. Okay, you can stay here, or you can shift the right foot to the inside of the left leg. So the right big toe's on the floor, and the right heel is on the inside of the left leg. Okay, arms are just going wherever they go to help you. Okay, take your right foot and step it back into pyramid. So feet on a separate railway track, toes pointing forward, knees not locked. Okay, hands to your heart. Okay, take a breath in. Exhale and gently turn your rib cage to the left. So the ribs, the shoulders, the head, all move as one unit. Okay, inhale and unwind so the rib cage realigns with the pelvis. Exhale and turn left. And inhale. And last time, turn to the left. Stay, breathe. If you want to shift arms, maybe right hand to the left side or to the left hip. Left arm can come behind you, maybe to the back of the pelvis, or maybe towards the opposite hip. Okay, feel your feet on the ground. Okay, unwind. Let your arms go. Take your back foot and step it forward. Okay, so you're back at the top of your mat. Okay, now you're gonna take your left, left foot and take a big step back with it. Then you're gonna turn and face the long edge of your mat. Okay, so for a moment here, your feet are parallel to each other. And then we're gonna turn the right leg so that the knee and the toes are pointing more up towards the top edge of your mat. Okay, now let your arms relax here. Then you're gonna let the right knee bend. Okay, so your feet are sort of more or less on a balance beam. So let that right knee bend so the thigh has come more parallel to the floor. Okay, just let the arms relax and the shoulders relax. Now, your gaze here, you can keep your neck sort of in line with your sternum, or you could turn your head to the right. Okay, and then you could lift arms. So the arms can come on up so that they're 
sort of parallel to the floor. And you get to choose whether you've got the palms facing the ceiling or if you've got the palms facing the floor. Okay, take a breath. And let it go. Okay, drop the arms for a moment and just straighten out that right leg for a moment. Okay, next we're gonna come into side stretch. So bring that right thigh back so that it's parallel to the floor or more parallel. So the knee is bent, the hip angle has changed. Okay, and then the right forearm is gonna come over onto the right thigh. So you're moving your torso towards your right leg. Now, your left hand here can be at your left hip or it could be straight up towards the ceiling or it can come up and over top so that the fingers are pointing up the top end of your mat and the palm is facing down. Okay, both sides of your body are long. So the left side is long as well as the right side. Okay, and your gaze is wherever your neck is most comfortable. So maybe it's down, maybe it's towards the uh, wall, maybe it's up. Okay, take the left arm and let it come back to the hip and then push through your right heel to bring yourself up. Okay, let your arms relax, turn your right leg so that your feet are parallel again. And then we're gonna turn the left leg. So turn the left uh, thigh bone so that the knee and the toes point more towards the top of your mat. Okay, bend that left knee. Let your arms relax. Remember those three points on the bottoms of your feet, the bases of the big toe, the ball of the foot, the base of the little toe at the ball of the foot, and the center of the heel. Okay, feel a breath. If you'd like to lift arms, they can come on up. Remember your palms can face either direction, any direction and your head can face the long edge of your mat or it can be looking down this left arm. Okay, just sink into your legs. Let those legs support you. Okay, take a breath. And let it go. Okay, drop the arms, straighten the leg for a moment. So just take a break. And then we come to side stretch. So left knee is going to bend again. You're going to move your torso towards the left, which is the pelvis and the ribcage and the spine coming left, left forearm to the left thigh. Right hand could be at the hip or up towards the ceiling, so straight up, or it could be up and over top. Right? And some days it's fine to bring it up. Some days it's just going to need to stay at the hip. That's okay. Feel like you can lengthen both sides of your body. Shoulders staying back. Okay, take the right arm and bring it back to the hip. And then push through the left heel, center of the heel, and come on up. Turn the left leg so your feet are parallel. Okay, we're gonna fold over here into a wide-legged forward fold. So hands can come to your hips, so you can tip over. So a half fold, you can bring your hands down to your blocks or to the floor in front of you. And that, so in a half fold, we're not, we're letting the back stay straighter, right? So if you have concerns about your back, then you can still do a, a forward fold, you just go halfway, okay? Or you can be upside down if that is comfortable for you. Okay, from here, we're going to come down to seated on the mat. So however you want to get down uh, to sitting. Okay, so sitting, your seat on the floor, your legs in front of you, so your feet on the mat in front. Okay, you're going to let the back come up nice and long. 
Okay, don't use the arms 100% for that. Let, let a lot of it come from the core of you, okay, to come on up. And then we're going to balance. So you're just going to rock back so that your feet are up off the floor. So you can stay here. You could slide the hands behind the thighs and stay here. You could lift the shins up so they're parallel to the floor. Okay, you can do all that without the hands as well. So that's boat pose. Okay, breathe. Okay, and then you can drop the feet back down, and then we're going to come onto our back. So come on down to your back. You can let your knees come in for a moment, and then keep the right leg and let the left foot come to the floor. So just interlace your fingers, let your hands rest on your shin or behind your thigh, and just sort of let the right leg sink in. Relax your shoulders, your arms, your jaw. Okay, we're going to take the right foot towards the ceiling next. So you can slide the hands behind the thigh. You also don't have to use the hands if you don't want to. Okay, so that right leg is up, the knee can be bent, or the leg could be straighter, but we're going to circle out the right ankle. Okay, let your circle move the other direction. Okay, and then move the top of the foot towards your shin, and then the top of the foot away from the shin. And see if you can do that movement of the ankle with the toes staying relaxed. So top of the foot towards your shin, top of the foot away from your shin. Okay, relax the foot and the ankle. Okay, next we're going to come into the knee. So your thigh is going to stay where it is. And you're going to bend the knee as far as you can so your heel is dropping towards your sitting bone. And then you're going to take the foot up towards the ceiling so the leg straightens out. So let the knee bend, so it's it, whatever range you've got, and then straighten it out as much as you can. Okay, so let the knee bend, and then straighten out the leg. So when you're straightening out the leg, you're sort of squeezing, and the, the kneecap is coming down the thigh towards where the pelvis is. So there's a piece of this that's about range of movement, and there's a piece of it that's about strength and flexibility, right, in the back of the leg. All right. From here, you can let that right foot come down to the floor. Okay, pick the left leg up. Give the left leg a hug in. So interlace your fingers. Your hands can rest on your shin or behind your thigh. Easy shoulders, easy belly. Okay, slide the hands behind the thigh if you like and send the foot up towards the ceiling and then circle out the ankle. Okay, let the movement go the opposite way. Okay, then move the top of the foot towards you, towards your shin, and then the top of the foot away from your shin. Feeling that movement as you go back and forth at your ankle. Toes relaxed. Just let the toes follow. Put your awareness in your ankle. The front of it, the back of it. All right, relax the foot. Now the thigh, we're gonna change joints and come up into the knee. So, thigh stays where it is, so you're not moving at your hip, you're bending your knee so that your, your uh, shin is dropping and then the shin is lifting and the leg is straightening. Okay, so drop the heel and then lift the heel towards the ceiling, straightening the knee. Bend the knee and then straighten the leg. 
So reach through the heel. A couple more. So shoulders easy, jaw easy. You don't need your jaw to straighten your knee. Breath happening. Okay, straighten it out best you can. And then let that left foot come back to the ground. Okay, feet on the floor. And just gently let your knees rock from left to right. So from side to side. Okay, so this is a windshield wiper movement. It's a gentle uh, movement of the leg bones in the hip sockets and a gentle twist. So you're choosing how far over to each side you want to come and you're choosing the pace. Maybe it's a little slower. Maybe you want to put a pause in the twist. Okay, when that feels complete, let your feet just come back to the floor. Okay, next we come to our relaxation. So if there is a movement that you want to do in your body before you do that, then you can. Okay, and then we're going to come down into whatever posture you're going to be the most comfortable in to relax. So you could use blocks underneath your knees, you could use a bolster or a pillow underneath your knees if you wanted to. Okay, you could tuck something underneath your neck if you wanted to. You don't have to have anything underneath your knees if that's not comfortable. You could just have legs all the way down on the floor. You could also have feet on the floor, knees resting together, which might mean your feet are a little wide. And if a different position here is more comfortable and appropriate for your body, then do that. Okay, so you're just going to choose your relaxation pose and you're going to rest in it. So you're going to stay there. Okay, so close your eyes. Feel the floor underneath your body. Okay, so the floor, you are touching the floor with different parts of your body now. So just feel like you can rest through those parts of you into the ground. Okay, you're letting the body relax. So you're letting go of effort and tension. And your breath is taken care of, right? Your, your body is already breathing, so you don't have to change your breath. And if that feels like something that would be nourishing to do, you can change your breath. So maybe you want to slow it down or deepen it just for a few rounds. Overall, the intention here is to rest and to relax. We're just going to come to a gentle body scan. So we're just moving our awareness from place to place in our body. We're going to start up in the head. So just let your awareness come up into your head. You can feel the crown of your head. You can feel the scalp. You can notice the place in your head that's touching the floor or the pillow. Okay, you can soften forehead and eyes. And your nose and your cheeks. And relax your ears. Relax the jaw and soften your tongue. You can even feel like you can soften the inside of your head. And 
soften your throat and become aware of your shoulders. Let them rest, your arms resting, your hands resting. Just letting go. You come into your rib cage, your chest, that space inside the rib cage, so your heart, your lungs. And then down into the belly, and just let the belly soften. Everything inside that space, just let it relax. Let your lower back relax. Okay, you soften your pelvis. So that could feel like relaxing the lower belly or the back of the pelvis or your pelvic floor your hips, everything contained within the bowl of the pelvis. Okay, and then feel your legs. And notice if they can rest a little more. Get to relax. And then hold in your awareness your whole body. So from your head all the way down to your feet and all the way outward to your hands. Have a sense, awareness of how your whole body rests here. And parts of you, it might feel easier to rest parts of you than other parts of you. That's okay. It's a great awareness to have. Just notice what you notice here. So as we practice building our awareness, we get to be aware of more and more, which is a good thing because it lets us learn to feel the more subtle within us. And the more that we're aware of within us, the better we are at sort of tuning our practice to what our body needs and what will nourish us. practice being aware at any point during your day. You could just pause and you can just check in and you can just notice where you're at. And that noticing where we at, where we're at, guides us towards what we need. And sometimes we don't need anything. Sometimes we just need to know where we're at. Even just the being aware, even just the checking in can be helpful, can be healing for us. Okay, so just notice where you're at, how you are, 
this moment in your day, the end of your practice. So give yourself permission to stay here. If you have some more time and you are comfortable, then you are welcome to stay here and relax. If you are wanting to come uh, up and finish your practice, then start by just moving your body how it wants to move. So maybe fingers and toes want to move first, and hands and feet could circle. So you could move at your wrists, you could move at your ankles. Okay, you could give your legs a gentle hug in. All of this you're doing at your own pace. And if something else would feel better for you, then you're doing that. Okay, you might be still, you might rock a little bit from side to side. You might roll onto your side and you might just pause there. Right? And you take might take a moment or a few moments or even a minute. Okay? And then when you felt ready from there, you can push your top hand into the floor and you can bring yourself back up to vertical. So that from there you can come seated or kneeling. But give yourself those moments along the way to Stay in your body and stay connected. And then when you get back to vertical, you just check in there. Okay, if you like, hands to your heart. If you like, take a breath in. And let go. Thank you for joining practice today. Have a lovely rest of your day. Take good care, everyone.